Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. We have been working on this super cool vintage 1978-ish era Valley Kiss pinball machine. One of the most famous valleys of all time. Uh, a gentleman bought this from Repo Records in Charlotte and he's... Uh, uh, he brought it down here to us to fix up for him and get it working again. And we've got it up and running. Uh, if you didn't see the first video, we rebuilt the power supply and the solenoid board and showed off the game a little bit. We've already done the play field and got it back in nice shape. Um, and uh, on the last video, we were messing with the MPU. We put a brand new MPU board in it and we got the thing to boot up. So it's up and running, but it's not running right. So it's got some issues. So we're going to work through that on this video. So, right here at the beginning, give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. We've been telling people to do that at the end, but not everybody watches to the end. But you know what? Everybody watches the beginning. Um, so we're going to mess with it a little bit today and see what we can figure out. Now, the, what it's, the problems that we're having is it's, uh, the lights are doing some weird things. So you've got some lights flickering, which could be the lamp board or the MPU. I, I doubt it's actually the MPU because it's a brand new one. It's going to be connections or something like that. But uh, So we've got lamp issues. Uh, it will not start a game, and it will not play a game. It won't score, so I think there's probably switch issues. So I'll show you what, what's going to happen. Now, on the last video, whenever we uh, tested the DC voltage to make sure that it's getting 5 volts over to the board, uh, like it says in the... In the uh, Manual, uh, you're supposed to check DC, make sure you get 5 volts or more, we do. And then you're supposed to check AC as well, but I forgot to do that on the last video. So I figured I'd just show you. So we've got 0 .02 volts AC, that's not much at all. So I think we're good there. And the reason that uh, there's, not, no, there's not much AC coming through is because we did replace the filter capacitor and all of that. So the, the game is up and running, but it ain't running right. So what I'll do is, let me disconnect this. And then we're going to, I'm going to start a game and show you what it's not doing. And then we're going to work through it, okay? <laughs> so it's trying, but it doesn't kick the ball out. You did hear it reset the uh, drop targets. You can manually kick the ball out, uh, but it doesn't score right. Nothing's working right. Nothing's doing its thing. It's kind of like it's frozen a little bit, which typically means you've got switches that are stuck or something. So we're going to have to figure that out. We've got some kind of switches stuck or uh, even the displays might be causing this. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is unplug uh, some of the uh, things from the uh, uh, lamp board and we're going to go into test and see if any of the switches are showing us that they're stuck. Okay, we're in the solenoid test. I've unplugged everything on the lamp board just because all of the twinkling lights and stuff, I don't know if that's causing problems or not, but we're in solenoid test and every solenoid is working, including the ball kicker. That was it there, it just didn't kick the ball all the way, but it's at least trying. When it starts the game, it doesn't even try. Sounds like we blew a fuse. So the, the knockers and the, 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 co the coils in the cabinet are still working, but on the play field they're not. So something's, something's tripping people. I'm going to guess out hole kicker. But um, we definitely got issues. So I'm going to get a piece of paper and start writing down what we're finding out. So that's the soundboard test. I think it's uh, missing a note or something. So it's suspect as well. Okay, the game is telling us what's wrong with it. Now you might notice two of the display, three of the displays aren't working. This one was just working, but it's not. So again, people. We're working through it. We're working through it. So far, all we've got is the power supply done and the, the, a brand new board in it, right? We've got other issues, obviously. We're working through it. Don't get discouraged. We're going to make it. So I've, I've, I went into the test menu, and I can't even read what test we're on because this display is not working. So I could probably take that display and put it up there. 
But luckily, Bally was pretty smart with the way they did all their tests. So the first test is always all the lights. And so I unplugged all those because a lot of them were doing crazy stuff and I didn't know if that was actually affecting the CPU or something. Uh, and then the second test is all the displays. Well, three of them aren't doing anything. The third test is all of the solenoids. And you saw it going through and uh, whenever it was trying to kick the ball out, it wouldn't come all the way out. I did this by hand. Whenever it was trying to kick the ball out, it wouldn't come all the way out. That's probably a little screwy under the apron. We'll look at that here in a little bit. And then eventually it blew the fuse under the play field for the solenoids, so one of the solenoids screwed in up. And then the next test is the music test that just plays a little melody over and over again that I don't, I don't know the melody it's trying to play, but I, it sounded to me like there was a note missing in there, so the soundboard needs work. So basically we're figuring out everything needs work. The displays need work, the, the soundboard needs work, the, the uh, light board needs work, the solenoids need work. We've already done work on the play field. We've already done work on the power supplies. We already put in a new MPU. So the next test uh, is the fifth test. So there should be a five right here. Again, we'll get to that here in a little bit. And it's the switch test. So that's what I wanted to get into. So like I was showing you, like I was telling you, uh, usually whenever you have a problems where stuff is just going screwy, there's something wrong with some of the switches. So when you put it in the switch test, it'll say five here, and then you will get on all four displays whatever switch is activated blinking. Now, if, if I hit a switch, it should add it to the equation here. So if this is like switch 20, it should say 07, and then blink and say 20, and then go back and say 07, 20, 07, 20, and it'll show all of the switches that are connected. But it's not, and that's because it's showing switch 7. So 07, let's look in the manual. So in the manual, it tells you what all the numbers mean. So 1 is drop target 2, drop target 3, drop target 4, drop target 5, light a line, 6 the credit button, 7, tilt switch. That makes sense, doesn't it? The tilt stuck on. So what's happening is when we start the game, it starts the game and then immediately tilts itself because the tilt switch is stuck down. You may remember this exact same thing was going on on the skate ball that we had. But Bally has a pretty good self-test, so you can actually go through and it'll tell you, if you know what you're looking at, what's going on. So we've got a tilt switch stuck somewhere. So we need to look inside of it and figure out which one of it is. See how there's a little three? There's three different tilt switches. So one of them is either stuck on or uh, the wiring is messed up or the uh, MPU board can actually cause that problem too if there's something screwed up on the MPU board. But since it's a brand new MPU, it's probably not that. Um, so it should be something simple. We'll go see if we can find what screwery, not my first choice of word, what screwery people have done to this thing. All right, we have tracked it down. The top connector handles all the playfield switches and strobes, and the bottom one does just the cabinet playfield and switches and strobes. So the, I, I even unplugged the entire top connector and uh, still had the same problem. So, uh, with the bottom connector on, I have removed one of the um, uh, tilt wires from this switch. Somehow this connector must somehow be shorting out to the, uh, basically the way this works is the blue line comes over here, the red line comes over here. If, that, if you pick up the machine, this ball rolls down and hits that switch, which shorts it out. But, uh, for whatever reason, whenever this is connected, you can hear it beeping. It, it shorts the uh, tilt switch together, so I got to figure out why that is. I guess somehow this switch um, is connected to the metal somehow. It must be by the rivets or something. So I will check it out. Um, worst case, if that thing is damaged somehow, where the switch mounts. I believe the, uh, well, hmm. you know what, the way it wires, that's the white, dun, 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 dun. 
we got something going on here. I'm going to keep messing with it. We'll figure it out. But it's if I unhook the wire from that, everything's cool. So, But we got to make sure that we can still get the tilt to work, just in case they want the tilt to work. But something, one of these tilts is shorting. There must be a bad diode or something somewhere. So I'm going to keep looking at it. Okay, folks, I found it. I had seen it before, and I even checked it earlier, but it did not behave as I thought. So this is what you look for. It was the damn cap. Should have known. There is a little cap on the tilt bob. I've disconnected it now. Right? It goes across the, two the strobe and the return on the switch. So whenever this tilts, if it just barely touches it, the cap makes the pulse wider so that the the, uh, the game sees it. You have the same thing on pop bumpers a lot of times. Um, let's see if I see one still on here. I see one here. Well, this one here has been uh, cut loose already. They they short out on pop bumpers and it makes the switch stay closed, but. So I, I thought that whenever I saw it earlier, and I checked it, and it's not shorted according to the multimeter. But if it's hooked up, it says that the um, it says that the uh, uh, tilt is on. So I'm going to replace that. I'm going to put the wire back on, and then we'll check it to make sure that the tilt works. But uh, I think we're ready to check all our switches again. So like if I hold one down, we're getting. Uh, we're getting our stuff. Let's see if this tilt works. Oh, it must be a slam switch instead of a tilt switch. But uh, that's the deal. So I'm going to replace the capacitor. I actually have the right one. I'll show it to you. Check it out. 473. That's 0 0.047 microfarad. And so the original one was a 0 0.05. Okay, so I'm going to swap it. I'm going to put all that wiring back together, and then we'll test make sure the tilt works. Okay, so we got that cleaned up. We've had a couple people ask about how the tilts work. I've shown it in, in other videos, but we might as well show it again. So basically, like I said, if you pick up the front, this ball, I cleaned it up a little bit. It was all oxidized. Rolls to the front. And see, it's rolling on the metal, which is this one This one wire is connected to. Well, if it gets all the way to the end, because you're picking it up, it hits this switch up here. Whenever it hits that switch, it's connecting the blue wire to the uh, red wire. And you get a tilt. So if I let go of it, no more tilt. And then the other one is the jiggle one. So if you shake it enough that thing will flop around and uh, will hit this. Now this little plumb bob here uh, can actually go on upside down to where it sticks up through this hole. And then if it does, it makes it, since it's conical, it makes it where it's easier or harder to tilt. Someone has taken it all the way off and, and hung it down at the bottom so it's really hard to tilt. But if you shake it enough and this, uh, if the plumb bob, if it was up here, or if this touches the ring, you're doing the same thing. You're connecting the blue wire to the white and black wire, right? And if I let go of it. So our tilt works. All that for a freaking tilt. Can you believe that? But now that it works, uh, I'm going to check some more of the switches. And uh, we'll make a little list. We'll just go through and check all the switches and uh, make a little list of what's screwed up. And if we find any more that are that need work, we'll uh, we'll we'll uh, see what the problem is with them. Okay, folks. So the only reason that we fixed that tilt like that was because it was keeping everything else from working. None of the switches would work because the tilt was stuck on. For excuse me. So we're going to test all the switches now. So we've got it in switch test. For some reason, that one display started working again. Ah, whatever. Uh, so we're going to go through and just test each switch with our hand just to see if they're all working. So I'm doing a coin switch. Oh, I already did the four drop target ones because if I knock those down, they'll stay down. Um, and uh, 
each time it will tell me four switches down, so I can't do that. Boom. So we're at zero, which means there are zero switches with anything on it. Coin switch. Number nine. Ultra coin switch. Number nine as well. The other coin switch. Number ten. Okay, well two of them are the same for some reason. Whatever. Start button. Number six. Alright. The test button works because we've been trying it. So that's everything on the coin door. It's all gravy, baby. So now we're down to the play field. So out lane. 34. In lane. 27. In lane. 26. Out lane. 33. Stand up target. 17. 12. 13, 14, 15. You kind of want to watch and see if anything starts giving you the same number. Maybe get some wires crossed or something. 25, 18. Sometimes you will get some that do give you the same number. Like this is a, a uh, just a rebound rubber. So it's 25. And this one over here probably is too. I would pick the one that doesn't work. <laughs> All right, it's not doing anything. We'll go back to that one. Uh, spinner. Sometimes the spinners don't work great. You got to clean them sometimes. Eh, that's fine. Thirty. Let's see about the other spinner. Thirty-one. Okay. Top rollover. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Five. 23, 24, we're looking pretty good. I don't know if the kickers actually have them. Yeah, they do. 35, 36, pop bumpers. Remember the fuse is blown on the play field right now. 37, 39, 40, 38, 18, 19. Okay, the only one that isn't working is the one I tried to make. Oh, the out hole. Number eight. It's one I tried to make an example of. And there's one behind the drop targets. I don't know if I can touch without knocking a drop target down. Yeah. 25. So this one isn't working. Oh, there we go. 40. It looks like it's just dirty. Oh. Okay, it's off. Not working. Something's going on with that one. So top left, rebound. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll pop up the play field and look at that. But uh, it looks like everything else was pretty good. Okay, so this is the one that wouldn't work. And on the top it's just a rubber ring. It's the only thing on the play field that wouldn't work whenever we pressed it. You see how you have two wires going to it? The way they wire these up, there's actually a little diode that's missing. That should go from here to here. I'm going to zoom in. There should be a diode from here to here. It's been, I'm sure that was cut off. Maybe it was shorted or something. Um, see this one? The wire connects to a diode which then connects to the other blade. And all the switches work like that. Um, the switch matrix just needs diodes in it. So for whatever reason somebody's cut the diode off. It must have shorted or something. So we will put one back on. But all the other switches worked fine. Uh, let me show you on the pop bumpers. So the pop bumpers, this is the coil that drives them. But to make it fire, you roll up on that skirt. Look at that dirt all over me. You roll up on that skirt on the top, and this switch closes. 
Well, when that switch closes, sometimes it does it really fast. So the same thing that we had on the tilt for it to elongate the pulse, it has a little cap on it. And you can see all of the caps have been pulled loose, probably because they shorted, or maybe the operator knew that they short a lot. So they have been cut off of all four of the pop bumpers. They also put them on some of the stand-up targets are supposed to have them. So let me see if I can find the one on the front. So like this stand-up target, if we can get it to focus, likely had one. So if you look close, see how you see some extra stuff there? That's where the cap was and they cut it off. So I need to add that cap back on the pop bumpers and the stand-up targets. It'll work without it, but the reason they put it on was so that if you hit it real fast, it always scores. So they want it to, you want it to always see that pulse, even if it's just for a second. So you get your point. So I got to add those back in, and uh, I have to add that missing diode on that side. So that should get all of our switches working, and uh, every all of the switches in the cabinet working and then that will leave us with the lights to mess with, the soundboard to mess with, the solenoids to mess with, and the displays to mess with. But hey, we'll have the switches out of the way. Let me uh, solder some of that stuff in and then we'll see what we end up with. So in the schematics it says all, di all diodes are 1 in 4004, very common. All capacitors are 0 0.05 MFD. Microfarad. Uh, so that's easy enough and if you ever want to know where they go it usually says in the schematics so the left if you see uh, say the K rollover it, it shows a switch and a diode but if you look on the thumper bumper it shows a switch a diode and a cap so the left thumper bumper the right the top and the bottom you thought I was gonna say thumper bumper four times didn't you so all of those have it also, the S lower target, the S upper target, the I target, and the K target all have it, the KISS um, stand-ups. And then the A, B, C, and D targets all need to have one that cap just so that it can see a, a really fast hit. Makes it play better. So I'll get the, I'll get the soldering. Okay, so I added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right back where it ought to be. What do you think about that? So I'm going to vacuum it out, clean up the inside a little bit, and then we'll lay it back down, and we'll go back into switch test and uh, see if the, those switches are still working, make sure none of them are locked on or anything. They shouldn't be, but... Uh, and we'll see if that one where I put the diode in is now dioding properly. And then hopefully that will be it for the switches, and we can move on to something, uh, something else, like figuring out why the solenoid fuse blew again. That's the fuse... It was working fine. So that's next up. Okay, so I'll clean it out and then we'll uh, we'll mess with the switch test one more time and hopefully we'll be done with that. Okay, so with it up and attract with the uh, <laughs> with the tilt not stuck, we now have four displays and the kiss lights are working better. This thing is christening itself. It's bringing itself back. We're just helping it a little bit, and it's doing the rest. I have the, I have, I've, I've probably told you my theory before. This machine only has one purpose. It's an inanimate object, but everything on it is designed to make the whole kiss pinball thing work, right? So things break, and if you fix them, the other things will kind of do what they're supposed to do. It seems like they work towards their purpose. That's my working theory, at least. So I don't know if they'll cr completely Christine themselves, but they do seem to, uh, they cooperate a little bit. Now, part of it's your attitude, though. So you saw how, like, the power supply was screwed up, took me a while to figure out what exactly it was. Then the tilt switch was screwed up, took me a while to figure out exactly why that was. 
etc., etc. There's, you know, you, you kind of just got to stick with it. So let's go back into test mode and see if it's still all screwed up. So that's the first test. We haven't done any of the bulbs yet. We'll mess with that at a later date. There's our displays. We haven't done them yet either. But it looks like they're starting to cooperate a little bit. Okay, so here's the solenoids. I put the fuse looked fine. I took it out. I uh, the the holder was a little loose, so I snugged up the holder a little bit, and I put another fuse in just in case. Um, I, I tested it. The, the old one was fine. Uh, so who knows? So we're about to go into solenoid test. Let's see if that's uh, if any of that's working. Gonna watch it for a second and see if it's gonna blow a fuse again. Or if it didn't blow it before, but we'll see if it can keep it up. The little ding dong you're hearing in the back is it turning on the flipper relay. You could probably hit the flippers. It, yeah. If you if you hit the flipper button right when the relay's on, they'll work. Okay. So I'm gonna blame the uh, I'm gonna blame the solenoid thing on uh, the fuse holder needed proper tensioning. Now that it's gripping a little better, it seems like it's all right. Here's the fuse that was in it. I tested it and it's fine and of course it looks fine. So I don't know. Okay, so we're back in the test mode. Oh, you may have seen it kicked the ball out. So how did I fix that? I'm gonna show you exactly how to fix that. If yours won't kick the ball out, see if there is a toothpaste cap stuck where the ball goes in front of the coil. So when the coil comes out and it hits the ball, if it's hitting a toothpaste cap or whatever this is <laughs> instead, that keeps it from hitting the ball. So if there's one of these in your machine, take it out because that's not factory. It must have, I don't know, somehow got on the play field. I tried to blame it on Joe. He did the play field. He said he didn't have nothing to do with it. He never took the apron off. So he didn't see it. I don't know, people. Seems a little fishy to me. Okay, so we're back in switch test mode. So we got to test all the ones with, with stand-up with uh, caps on them now. I wish in test mode, by the way, if you hit them real quick, it won't show up in test mode. But if you put it in gameplay, it will. We may check here in a minute. That one's working. That one's still 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 working. That one. That one. Okay, we're gonna do the four pop bumpers. You don't think it's gonna pinch me, do you? Oh, no! Okay, and then finally, boom, what a lovely sight. Every damn switch on this thing works now. Uh, uh, uh. All right, people, so if you're working on one of these, you got switch problems, do it systematically. Go into the test, see if any of them are stuck on. Get you a piece of paper, test every damn switch. Write down all the ones that have problems, and then go underneath and start looking at it. Oh, I, I should have mentioned earlier. When I was wiggling that connector and we had Joe look at the front, what must have been happening was I was moving it enough that it made the wire from the whatever part of the matrix does the the uh, tilt. It must have just been building, bending the the uh, connector enough to where it wasn't making good contact and it no longer could see that the tilt was shorted. So that was not that had nothing to do with it really. It was on the uh, it was the cap on the on the tilt. So 
All right, so that's that. So let's do this. Let's uh, get it back into gameplay, and then let's see if it'll finally start a game after all this time. So these are your thresholds where you can set the high score and all of that. We're not going to do that yet. It's booting up. All right, we're going to put this in the down in the thing and remember we set it on free play right so at the beginning of this video we tried to get it to play let's see if it'll play now what do you think about that okay so let's see if my hitting it fast thing works I don't want to hit it too fast because if it pops off and goes over there and breaks something this it's gonna be god awful <laughs> I think I missed him. I guess I don't have to have a pinball to do that. <laughs> Let's, see. Let's see if I just hit it really quick. It seems to be crazy responsive, right? So that's what you're looking for. Let's go. Let's go nuts. Shall we? Okay, so there's no way you could have possibly hit the thing that quick with any of with with the the pinball, right? So I think that's good enough. So I believe all of our switch problems are no more. What do you think? <laughs> get get your butt back up there. You know one of the things that's missing on some of the modern machines, some of them, is the long as hell bonus countdown. It should take forever to count down a bonus, make you think that you did something. <laughs> Very cool. Alright, let's do the third ball and then we'll end the game and see if it's... See if it ends the game. And it'll, it's gonna play a song too. All right, if our buddy In My Head is watching, we have one of our followers In My Head, he's a big Kiss fan. What song is that they're trying to play? I've never heard that one. If you, uh, if you hear it and you can tell, which I'm sure he can, let us know down below. We're all curious. Um, so there you go, folks. So. We are far from done on this thing, but we did get all the switches working. The thing, you can actually play a game now. The solenoids seem to be working. I think it was just the, the loose uh, fuse holder, hopefully. It's, it's playable as it is. And uh, I didn't mention in this video, but I did in the other one. We have the back glass. It's in the back. We just haven't put it on yet. It's in nice shape, too. You're going to love it. You're going to love it, but you're going to have to wait for it. So uh, uh, we've got all the switches working. We've got the power supply working. We've got the MPU board working. We're rolling right through it. We are rolling right freaking through it. So what's left? The lights are driving me crazy. Some of them aren't working. Um, so we got to fix some light bulbs. Basically replace all of them. Uh, we have to do the soundboard. And we have to do the displays. But that will not be today. That will be tomorrow. So <laughs> if you... Uh, if you subscribe to us here, you'll be able to see that. Now, if you look down below, we have a link to Amazon. If you go buy all of your KISS paraphernalia, and you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. If you go buy all of your, all of your KISS paraphernalia, or anything you, you, you like at all from Amazon, click our link before you do it. And all that does is it tells Amazon, it puts our name up in your, up in your uh, URL, and it tells Amazon, hey, 
the good guys at Lions Arcade, Joe's Video Games, sent you over here to Amazon. And uh, it gives us a royalty for that. And so we would like to thank all of the people that have been doing that. Somebody was on there earlier buying all kinds of stuff. Whoever was buying all that stuff for computers, we appreciate it. They were buying solid state hard drives. We appreciate that. And it doesn't cost you anymore. You don't have to sign up for anything. Literally, all you have to do is click the link. And then once you're there from the link, you can buy whatever your little heart content, whatever makes your little heart content. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Thank you so much. Uh, make sure to subscribe to us. Leave your comments down below. Give us a thumbs up. But you should have already done that. I, I asked you to at the beginning of the video, didn't I? Surely you already gave us a thumbs up. When you give us a thumbs up, that's the best thing you can do to help our channel. Because what it does is it 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 sloshes this around. <laughs> Amazon says, oh look, people are thumbs up in that video. It must be great. And they send it around a little more. And that's what we're here for. We want to get more people watching it. We're hoping that people will watch these videos and then fix their own machines and keep these suckers alive. It doesn't really hurt our business. Believe me, I got more work than I can possibly do. So we stay busy all the time. So it doesn't hurt our business if other people know how to fix them. We're hoping that people will fix them. Um, and it doesn't really cost all that much to fix them. You see most of the, most of the, 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 uh, most of the commitment is effort, not resources or financial resources, right? It's just taking the time to actually do it and go through them in a systematic way. You can do that yourself, even if you don't have much money. And we know what that's like, people. We come from modest means, too. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, so uh, leave your comments below. And it had, did you know, you should know, if you've been watching all of our videos, that we have a second channel now. It's my brother Donnie's channel. And it's called, are you ready for this, My Brother Donnie. He's getting famous now to the point where you can just Google my brother Donnie and it'll pop up. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. That is literally my brother Donnie. And he's he's always into something. And he's filming a lot of it now. So uh, like uh, yesterday, this is a typical Donnie. He called me yesterday. Well, man, you ain't gonna believe what happened to me. What happened, Donnie? I was driving down the road, hit the brakes. None of them were working. I was on this big, long straightaway. Nobody was in front of me, so I just coasted, and I started breaking it down from gear to gear, and I got it down to, oh, that's for all of you uh, English people. I started breaking it down from gear to gear, and I got it down to nothing, and then I rolled into a, a garage. I, I had to drive for six miles with no brakes. I got it in a garage, and then I had to show them how to fix my brakes. They did, and it only cost me 80 bucks. <laughs> so I told them, yeah, we got to film a video about that. So you'll see the evidence of that. It's probably up by now on his channel. But uh, <laughs> it's just constant stuff like that. Every day, pretty much, he's got something. So leave your comments below. Make sure to subscribe to his channel if you get a chance to. I'm over there a lot. And uh, we're usually working on... It has nothing to do with arcade games. But usually we're working on vehicles. Or uh, we remodeled a... a uh, renovated an old mobile home that we bought. Always get lots of crazy stuff going on over there. So... I'll see you over on that channel. Leave your comments below for the fifth time. I'm asking you to leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up and we'll see you on the next video, which will be probably tomorrow.